right, let's do a quick test of the Grasshopper Web UI. And first things first, the samples that we're going to look at today are also going to be in this repository right here, right after this video is out. So feel free to check them out there if you want to do a little bit of experimenting. All right, let's get into Grasshopper. So I've created a super basic parametric script here just to help us understand how we could use uh, a UI, a web UI to interact with something like this. So very, very simple. We can toggle some parameters on this wall, like the height, the length, um, and we can do a little bit of uh, messing around here with the stud spacing and so stud sizes. Again, nothing super complex or revolutionary, just to kind of give us some parameters to play around with. So if we want to live in Grasshopper, obviously we can just use these sliders uh, to control this. But as we know, if you want to deploy this to other people that are a little less technically inclined or are a little allergic to the spaghetti, then we might want to have a user interface. So let's check it out here. All right. So the first sample I'm going to show is using a, a hard coded interface, which means that I'm essentially serving um, an HTML file, which I have hard-coded myself. I have defined these inputs and outputs. Uh, the file looks a little bit something like this. If you're familiar with web development, this obviously is going to look familiar. If you're not, um, this is HTML with a little bit of CSS for styling. And the way that it's being used here is super, super simple. I mean, there's really nothing advanced here. Um, and I'd encourage you to, to check some of this out if you're interested in learning how to do this. But essentially, I've defined all of these input elements here that we're going to use. And every time I make a change to this uh, template here, this will reload live. So if I want to get rid of something like, here we go, that's gone, and then I want to put it back in. So you can kind of code along as you're serving this in Grasshopper and, and make the changes necessary. And what it's going to do is it's going to take all of your input elements that have an ID and it's going to extract their values. So here we can see that we're extracting some of those IDs, or rather their values, and they've been defined right here and these are ultimately what we use to control our grasshopper graph once the data comes out of here all we're doing is pushing it or rather extracting it and then using it directly in grasshopper so let's actually just check that out to to verify that this isn't some kind of weird vaporware here we go so i'm going to change my wall length and obviously the wall length is changing um, you can see that some information is being computed on the bottom as well and i'll i'll get to that in a quick second but um, here we go with the stud sizing, la la la. Great. And at the end, obviously, we, we also want some input or output to, to our users, right? So there is a dedicated section in the Grasshopper interface, if it wants to come back, um, where we can set the values in the UI. Um, very similar paradigm to, to human UI that I tried to recreate. It's not 100% not perfect quite yet. Um, but we're getting there and those setters are, are working. You can see that as we compute um, different bits of information, uh, we can set those on the fly. And really all that requires is uh, a list of the IDs and a list of the values that you want to change. And again, those all go back to the static HTML file that we've des des designed over here. All right. Now, for those of us that are seasoned web developers, that's probably fine and dandy, but there's a lot of us out there that don't want to get into HTML and CSS to build a UI, right? And for those folks, rest assured, we're, we're working, we're working. Um, so this is, this is a lot less uh, finalized than, than the workflow we saw earlier. But the idea here was to uh, allow people to programmatically build these UIs through Grasshopper. No HTML, no, no hard coding whatsoever. Um, and really trying to mimic the paradigm that, that human UI has set forward. So you can see here that I've launched a new window and this one is not hard coded whatsoever. There is a path here defined, but that's simply where we're writing the file to. Everything that you see right here is being created with these elements right there. And just to demonstrate the extraction of information since I didn't quite there, since I didn't do it in the past uh, workflow rather, um, let's take a look at this. So it's the same window right here. We've got our ideas, we've got our inputs. So as I start filling things out over here, you can see that these values are going to change in real time. Um, now I'm changing the sliders right there. And of course, this label is updated with the data in real time. Same thing with checkboxes. You can see as I'm messing with these, these guys are changing right here. Color input uh, for those of you that, that are aesthetically inclined, boom. 
now we've got that updated and date and time and there's a couple of other ones as well but um, really right now the name of the game is to just build as many of these in here as is necessary to get something quick up and running and I'm, I'm sure that people are going to have a lot of other more custom requests but for right now just trying to get to the basics um, make sure to get the information out and be able to put it back in so again this is a little bit more a work in progress but um, hoping that this will be at a more finalized stage soon and one last thing I want to highlight here so currently you see a little bit of hard coding still left um, and this is totally optional for right now. I've, I've exposed this um, property for, for those of us that are, again, a little bit more technically inclined or, or have familiarity with CSS. But the idea is to be able to inject your own um, styling and templating and theming. Now, again, currently it's a little bit hard coded. Um, I do want to create some, some user focused components. Uh, again, for those people that don't really want to dive into CSS or just don't have the time to do it. So planning to add a section of those as well. Um, just basically common modifiers that, that can allow you to theme this. But overall, that's kind of where it is uh, today. I think the, the big technical hurdles are, are cleared. Like, frankly, the, this button was, was the thing that was worrying me the most. Um, and it's not quite perfect yet, but we are able to get those types of events. So um, next step is to get it into be even more real time. And uh, yeah, looking forward to doing it though. If you're watching this and you have some feedback or you're using this and you are spotting some bugs, please go ahead and let me know. Again, um, this repository here is where this all lives. Might change the name of it sometime soon so it doesn't sound boring and whack. But uh, in the meantime, please, yeah, please contribute and holler if there's any issues. I look forward to doing some more.